Hello everyone, today I'm working on this uh, U25B. I got a little bit lucky there. This came to me with no box, but it's in really good shape. And uh, it probably runs already. So the guy packed it for me, very well protected. All the handrails are there. We'll just take these out so you can see better. So this is the new kind that's uh, DCC compatible. So I am going to change it to DCC. At first I wasn't because my other uh, area Lackawanna were uh, DC only. So it's still got the horn, still got all the handrails. Couplers are there. Probably the original ones. So uh, everything's in really good shape. Probably runs great as it is, but I'm still going to clean it. And then, yes, I wasn't going to convert it to DCC because I wanted to run it with my other uh, era Lackawanna, which have the old drive, which uh, if you convert that to DCC, it's a lot of work. I've got, so I decided not to do it, to just run it with DC. But then I thought, why I buy the area like I wanna is because it's a early Conrail. So I'm gonna run this with my early Conrail trains with an engine that has DCC and sound. So that's gonna be a lot of fun. So whenever I buy uh, decoders from uh, Excel Systems, I'll get uh, I'll get one of these. Here's the instruction sheet for it, and I'll give you the guy's um, email address. If you want one, I checked just now online, and it's got, um, it's out of stock. There's the, there's the guy's info. If you want the website to look at the decoders and what's available, it's excelsystemsdcc.com, but the uh, this guy, Lin Ziping, he answers his email uh, very frequently. So if you want to get a hold of him, so these are back ordered for now, but I'm sure you'll be getting some more. So what I do, I'll buy the sound decoders. They're about uh, 54 bucks. I'll buy two of them to spread out the shipping costs. And then I'll buy one of these, which is about, uh, these are $15, but they're out of stock. But when they come back to be available, uh, they should be around the same type of price, which is really cheap, uh, 15 bucks uh, free shipping. That is really cheap. So I always include one with my order. So that's gonna be our project for today. To remove the shell, I use the box method. If that should happen to you, that the uh, the walkways get stuck on the side, that is not a problem. Just take your little screwdriver. You just help it along. Just help it along to lift up. Now to the other side, the same thing. It's the same with the uh, the old school. U25B shell, they need a little help to get up, uh, up this hump. So you just help it along. Okay. The first part of the shell goes first, that's fine. And then, so this is the, um, this is the newer drive system, which is DCC compatible, and it's got the circuit board here. You can interchange. Now the circuit board that I order, the no sound decoder from Excel Systems, it's um, it said it's for a GP38 or a U23B with the same size of uh, board for the U25B. So that happens to fit right in there no problem except that i might have to mill the frame just a tiny little bit 
Well, we're about to find out. Because I am going to open this up. While I'm looking at this, I'm noticing that the trucks have been put in uh, backwards. So this must be a pretty noisy. In fact, these, uh, these points here for the brakes, they should be towards the gas tank. That's what gave it away from me. So um, let's go see uh, on the track. It's probably really noisy. Yeah, it's pretty noisy. I'm gonna switch them around. It's also, I, I guess it does need cleaning. It stops a little bit. Yeah, it stops a little bit. So that, that's what you need to do. You need to clean them. That's okay, I know how to do that. So turning the trucks around, you don't need to undo the whole engine. You just loosen the screws and that should give you enough slack. Just wedge your screwdriver in there. It should give you enough slack just to pull them out. And you want to pull gently on these. You do not want to break these tabs here. You don't have to pull hard uh, by wedging. So I'll have, you see, the end of the brake uh, rod here is shorter than on this side. So you put the long side towards the fuel tank. And that's it. Wedge your screwdriver in there. That pops right in. Do the same thing on this side. Takes no effort to do that. Then we'll just switch the screwdriver back in there. And I retighten them. They don't have to be super tight, but I'll retighten them. And I'm also I'm using gravity as my friend. And I'll retighten that. Then we'll go try it on the track again. So it's still a little bit dirty. Um, yeah, it really needs cleaning, that's for sure. And it's still making a little noise, though it's a little bit better. That sounds about right, though. That's the best that uh, it's going to be. Before I get going on cleaning the, uh, the, the, the mechanism, I am going to wash all this stuff, give it some time to dry. It's really cool, really cool little shelf. I think I'm going to take half a second to straighten out the horn though, before I wash it. And then, I'll wash it. And I'll work on the mechanism. Check out that checker plate detail. That is really cool stuff. They do a lot of detail. I like the way they have the, uh, the steps. They have a couple of brake hoses in the front. Although they're molded in and not separately applied. It's still nice to have it. This is kind of an old shell. So I just use uh, my tooth, an old toothbrush and uh, some dish soap. It's the proper time to wash your fuel tank as well. So then we'll get going uh, on the drive. All the noise and loss of power, it's mainly in the trucks. So you have to pay more attention to the trucks and the wheels than anything else. So I'll, I will mark the proper orientation for them so that way when I put them back together I'll have it right and then once you have the two screws loose the frame will spread apart and then you get to your motor now this has those two motor uh, cradles just like the old style very similar 
so uh, when I run it I actually did not hear any noise from the motor so that's good that means um, it's been taken care of there's not much need for a lot of lubrication or cleaning in here um, since it's the new year the beginning of the new year I've got a new bottle uh, of oil so I bought myself this nice kit since I do a lot of engines this has other applications as well you can go ahead and use it for other stuff you know sometimes uh, you know lubricating uh, your house locks etc although uh, I use this mostly for uh, model railroading so the kit comes with the label 108 which is thinner and then the 102 is a little bit thicker and you have all these extra applicators which are uh, can be useful sometimes. I'm gonna check out the instructions. I'm not too sure what these are for, but uh, definitely I like having them. Then the two applicators for that, and then the instructions. I'm gonna read those uh, thoroughly. But that's the gift that I was uh, looking forward to get. Yeah, if it moves a little bit, I'm done with that. <laughs> so the whole time I'm working on this, you're going to see me very, very careful. These two cradles, they have to be exactly in the right spot. Otherwise, they'll call, cause trouble for you. For this whole engine, the only lubrication I'm doing is two drops. So that bottle is going to last me probably uh, four to five years of doing one engine uh, every week. So I definitely get a lot of value out of this. So this, it just runs great just out of the box. So there's no need to do anything, not even lubricating the motor, just the two little bearings. And that's going to be good. Where I spend most of my time is on the trucks. You know what? Before I hit the trucks, I'm going to see if my DCC board is going to fit right in or if I need to do some milling. It's looking good to fit right in. Actually looking amazing. I might have to move these pins down just a little bit but uh, I can do this I'm gonna bring in the other side of the frame just to be a hundred percent sure because if I've got some milling to do I'm gonna do it um, before I, uh, I clean everything because I might have some shavings left and if that happens then I'll have to um, I have to reclean everything. Yeah, I'll have to mill it. You see my cradle that moved just a millimeter, but that's very important to keep it in there, keep it in its place properly. That, believe it or not, is a big deal for for this engine. So yeah, so keep that in mind, and I have to move these two pins back. They bend uh, quite easily, so that's not so, so hard. And I don't have to do any milling on this side, which is good to know. But this side, I have to mill just a little bit. Just for... Just for these two... Uh, I don't know what they are, transistors, they interfere just a little bit with this part, uh, this part here. So I have to get in there and mill this part down just a little bit. So I'm going to mark this with uh, my 
trusty my trusty sharpie I'm gonna mark this and then I'll make the cut it turns out on this side too I have to clear this box so that too I'm gonna make a mark and uh, grind it just a little bit And that should clear that. I have no power today, so the uh, the lighting is going to be slightly different. So don't forget uh, to wash your parts. And uh, milling the frame wasn't actually that bad. I had to mill it here. It wasn't actually that bad. It took about twenty five minutes, but go easy because it's going to make this side of the frame. A little bit weak so take your time go easy it wasn't actually that bad so while my frame dries I'm gonna work on my trucks so this is where you make power or you lose power or where noise is made if anything's not aligned perfectly so what I do is I'll take the wheels out these two contact strips I don't uh, do anything with them. I'll check them just in case they're dirty inside here. But these look fine. I don't do much with them. And even though I got my brand new uh, bottle of uh, oil, I will not uh, lubricate these. And I'll take the wheels out. And I will clean them with my rag. That way I know exactly where they're at. Well, this engine's been run a little bit. That would explain uh, the stalling problems. Probably just cleaning the wheels will get me there. They look pretty clean to start with. But sometimes, you know, a little bit, every little bit helps. And then I'll take the wheels and my gearbox and my side frames and I'll wash them um, with my toothbrush and some dish soap. Now I'm getting ready to put everything back together but since I have everything in my hands I can check with my micro trains a height gauge compare them they're a little bit too uh well hang on wait a minute that is actually just perfect that's kind of cool and then check the other one this one also is right on the money so no need to make any changes there so I'll just pop these back in their gearbox and put the side frames back on Make sure that the ends uh, of the axles are in their little uh, bearing. It's a good design. The end of the axles conduct electricity and also um, is used as a bearing for the wheels. I don't put any lubrications on this. Nada. And then... You ever had to do that? You ever had to uh, do model railroads while you were uh, having no power? I did make a video before, uh, no power, no problem, which uh, helps you run. Uh, it's possible to run DC trains when you have no power. Hmm. I got this part on backwards. Happens to the best of us. So yeah, have you ever had to... Uh, since there's no TV or internet to be watched, you ever done that? Worked on your model railroad while there was no power? I'm sure glad I have this project today because I'd be pretty bored without it. So, but running this on DC, I don't think I can do it. You can put that down on the comments below. How many of you guys have generators now? I'm sort of on the fence. Maybe I should, maybe I shouldn't. 
but uh, it's getting to be more and more of a, a good uh, good idea now than now although the first time the, the Christmas snowstorm there I lost power for about 10 minutes so that was not much of an annoyance check them with your finger and then I'll do the other side off camera now that the frame is dry, do not forget to put some Kepton tape. That, um, the use of this is to prevent short circuits. If the, uh, if the little connector to the motor happens to touch this, you will have a short circuit. And that could uh, hurt your decoder. So we don't want that. So we'll do a little bit of prevention here. And the same thing on the other side. This is the side that is just a little bit longer. So that's good to have a little extra insurance. I'm going to cut this down with my X-Acto knife. And then uh, I'll put it back on properly. Here's what it looks like uh, at the end. Now I'm ready to put everything back together. So we'll start with the motor. You can see the little cradle here. That fell out of its place. So that, uh, you just have to be mindful of it while you do it. You know, here I'm using gravity uh, as my friend to put it back to where it goes. But you want to be mindful of that as you put everything back together. It's got to be perfectly in its spot. So as I bring it back, I will actually uh, mindfully, I'll actually, I'm still mindful of these, but I'll bring the, um, I'll bring the two worm gears in before I set this down properly. Before I say it's hundred percent in its place, I have to bring the, uh, the worm gears in. Because yeah, I still have to lift it a little bit to, to slide them in. 1998 it says on the frame. In 1998 I could not afford to buy this. I have, uh, I have done good over this time. It wasn't always easy, but I'm glad I did it now. Yeah, that one was always in place. And then I still have to lift it a little bit to bring in the worm gear and line that up properly. These sliding blocks are there to allow the worm gears to have a little play and that should reduce the noise. So now I'll check these carefully. These look good and these look good. And I'll put my, I'm almost, I'm almost ready to bring out the other half, put my decoder in. When you put your decoder in, make sure you line up these tabs. These two tabs they have to be a hundred percent. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. Then you just slide your decoder in. Check this again. Check this. Everything looks good. I can bring in the second half. That too will have its uh, its place where it sits sits a hundred percent. So bring it in. The DCC board uh, tabs have a little bit of solder in them. That's just to ensure that the uh, they bind together well. 
something's misaligned here I sh it shouldn't be hard to bring these together i'm going to check it off camera yay the power came back so it's still a little bit tight i checked everything carefully i'm not sure why i'm just gonna put uh, my fuel tank on and that's gonna angle back uh, everything the fuel tank there's only one way it's gonna go and it's this way and so that should hold everything together good enough i'm just gonna restart the two screws and i don't tighten them yet because i still have the trucks to put in there there i'm gonna start putting them back together yeah this one too i want to put the little uh the little nut back on there they have a side that they prefer but I don't tighten them and then I'll put the uh, the trucks back on I still have to uh, wedge my screwdriver in there to get them in. Maybe even loosen this some more. And then I can retighten it. for the other side perfect I've got plenty of slack and then I'll retighten this also check your contact strips make sure they're all aligned properly and they hit the top of, uh, of the little pin so that looks pretty good before I put the, uh, the shell back on I better go try it on the track Right, so I always do uh, the initial programming with the uh, the shell off. That way, if there's a problem, if the uh, NC power cap cannot read the CV, I can go back and readjust everything. So let's do that. Let's do the initial programming. So program, and then program on the main enter. Program local. Actually, I want to program on the program track. So let's cancel that. Program on the main. System clock. Use program track enter. So that's perfect. One standard. So I'm waiting, cannot read CV. That's not the end of the world, it just means um, my motor is not on there perfectly, or maybe the wheels are still dirty a little bit. Let's give it a try, let's just see if, uh, if the wheels were dirty. So that's okay, continue with enter. Just see if it's gonna work now okay so I'm gonna go back and reassemble it and make sure the decoder is touching the uh, the frame and the motor is touching the decoder so I just wiggled the motor a little bit and now it's working so standard manufacturer 225 that's interesting Decoder version 255. It's an Excel system, the manufacturer. So that's good. Nice to know. Uh, setup address. Yes. 
short address 003 enter read this address yes and then set up a uh, long address enter activate this address actually I did that wrong set up a uh, long address it's 2510 enter activate this address yes you can see it's flashing a little bit so I'm not gonna do too much programming now I'm just gonna get it to run so enter equals no so enter we'll do the same thing we'll skip that too and then we're done So 25 cent, 10, let's see if it will run. You have to give it a little bit. So, so far so good. Still having a little bit of power pickup issue. Even though I cleaned everything, probably when it said that I cannot read CV, it was over that. Let's turn on the headlight. Light switch direction and then accelerate again I'm gonna run it a little bit like that just probably needs to um, to loosen up a little bit so I'll run it for about five minutes like that so I have been running it for a little while and also, uh, while I was running it, I cleaned, uh, I cleaned the tracks, so uh, that never hurts. So it's running uh, much quieter now. I'm actually pretty happy with the performance. I'm gonna put the shell back on now. So that's kind of cool. So I don't know if you guys have been paying attention, but the light shield is missing from this. So if that should ever happen to you, all you gotta do is take a tiny little piece of uh, masking tape and you just mask out the windows like that and that will be a good enough uh, light shield for your engine it's pretty convincing once you have it in but you want to keep the uh, the number boards lit up. Anyways, I like to have them lit up. Well, alrighty then. Let's just uh, slip the handrails right over uh, the drive. You have to spread it out a little bit because it has, has to go over and under. Uh, over and un over and under it just like the song you can still uh, interchange this shell with the old uh, drive if you want to 
you can put the old shell uh, over uh, this drive also but then you don't have anything for your couplers but I have a video on that too where I had uh, an engine where the person had uh, cut off the coupler they were going to convert it to micro trains and I didn't have the kit so I made my own kit so let me just work for that on that for a minute such a beautiful and detailed shell I did not want to damage anything even though I have a bunch of engines I still like to take good care of them they uh, they just look so good you know and that's why um, I don't weather them it's because I used to buy my train new so I wanted them to look old now I buy them used so I want them to look new I might do it though one of these days I might try my hand at it there's a uh, much better techniques uh, nowadays double check my couplers that looks pretty good can't forget my horn can't run trains without your horn so that's gonna be yeah we're gonna I'm gonna run an early Conrail train for you guys early Conrail they had um, just taken over all these different roads and none of the engines were painted save for a couple so you would have um, you would have Penn Central, Penn Central patch. You would have uh, some Conrail, some Erie Lackawanna, and some uh, Reading in the same consist. So now we're ready, and now it's time to run some trains. Listen to that startup sequence. DCC and sound is my favorite. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. I certainly had fun making it for you. See you soon.